That's very useful. Look. Look! You just snipe her. Yo, how I dodged that guy. Did you guys see that? Hold on. Let's rewind that. Look at this. Look at... Look at that! Oh, God! Hello and welcome to Extreme Gameplays, where I play games stylishly. Today, I'm coming in with a new challenge series for God of War 3. Can I beat God of War 3 without blocking and without evading? This is gonna be a running series on the channel, so I'm gonna be uploading this in parts until I finish it. Today is part 1, and I'm gonna be covering the start of the game all up until we reach the Palace of Hades. Now, let me explain what I mean by no blocking. In the professional scene of God of War challenges, it would be called No Blocking Plus. What is No Blocking Plus? It means absolutely nothing to do with blocking options. You can't parry, you can't send back projectiles, you can't block, <laughs> obviously, and yeah, so on. And next up, when we have the no evading rule, it follows the same principles. As in absolutely no evading, no ground evading, no air dashing, nothing. See this right stick? We don't even come near it. It's useless. But just know that doing this while climbing a wall or while being on the ceiling section is fine. This is completely fine to go with because it's not an evasion. It's just a boost that helps you go faster, not an evading option. Plus, we're focusing on the real combat encounters here and not some wall section. Now, with the rules out of the way, let's start the first episode where I'm gonna go through the gameplay and parts that I fail and stuff. And if I accidentally block or evade, because, you know, muscle memory, then I have to restart from the last checkpoint. Without further ado, let's kick it. I should let you guys know that I'm doing this on very hard, as in yes, the very hard. So this is gonna be a doozy to go through. That's why I decided to make it in parts and not an actual full length two hour video. This is better, I think, just in parts to kind of make it dynamic, to make you guys wait for other parts and stuff. So let's start with the first part. All right, now starting with the first encounter, you're gonna see me slack off a little bit here and there, obviously, because this is not gonna be that easy for me. Like, not this. I'm talking about blocking and evading, and you're gonna see for yourself. As you can see, I'm doing some wide attacks and stuff, and delaying attacks so that I can cover up more space. And this is a good thing in God of War, and that's why I decided to do it in God of War 3, because uh, you don't have options where you can... See, I just block right there, and then of course I'm gonna restart, because no blocking. And here I instantly blocked again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, restart, as you guys can, are going to see right now. Yeah. Now, this time is going to be the real deal. Like, right here, I'm going to try to escape. And from now, see, I'm going to be doing a lot of wide attacks, you know, where I'm going to be delaying the first uh, square, the second square. See, I'm just going to... Yeah. These types of attacks, you got to do a lot of those to cover up more space so that you interrupt the enemy's attacks and stuff. This how this how is going to go for a lot of the encounters. So, Yeah. So, as you guys can see, I'm just going to clear this right here. It's going to be easy. It's nothing that special. And I just wanted to note out something right here. And it's that uh, these first couple of encounters right here. I mean, all up until we kill Poseidon. Is all very hard. Because we obviously still haven't got the Blaze of Exile. But it's going to get easier later on. So, let's move on to the next encounter. Now, obviously, more guys spawn in. And this time, I, I took the the optimal approach by grabbing that enemy and just you know taking him to a trip down memory lane and see i blocked back there but i yeah i, I of course instantly restart i absolutely cannot block but yeah so these first couple encounters don't expect me to mess up a lot with the blocks and stuff just know that this said the start of course expect five or six more times in this episode but i'm pretty sure my muscle memory my muscle memory is going to get better with this and i'm not going to be blocking as much so yeah, these two enemies of course get taken out easily with some comboing and some simple attacks and stuff. Now we approach the first boss and it's gotta be that Poseidon horse. Now at first I thought this was going to be very hard. See, as you guys can see I'm playing carefully and then I realized, okay, it's easy after this first jump right here. You can uh, just dodge this one easily by that jump and yeah, get back to action with square and uh, three triangles. Just to see I'm playing very carefully here and then of course jumping to evade that attack. And then we move on to the next section which is going to be the ceiling section. And right here is going to be easy of course, like nothing that special. Mainly just slashing at him until he goes away and you're going to see this right now. See uh, this right here? 
this is not an evade option this is just a simple boost as i as i said in the intro so yeah and uh yeah this is going to be going very smoothly right here next up is going to be the wall section now the wall section is uh it's a bit it's a bit iffy i mean i'm obviously going to be dodging with the square and triangle attacks which is faster but yeah see and i still got hit but it's fine like i'm fine that i didn't die and stuff which was good See, I'm gonna dodge with the attacks, which is much better than dodging with X uh, in this section. See, again, if you want to try this challenge out, just make sure to follow these tactics right here. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot better, uh, you know, strats and stuff for these sections, but I I'm just gonna say that my my uh, strats are not that bad. And here I tried the risky attack, the torturous rage, which got me kind of destroyed back there. But yeah, next time I just I just went with the magic attack because it's safer, cause. Nobody really wants to die here. I mean, it's, it's going to be very ugly. So I decided to go with the magic attacks just to be safe. No jumping, no nothing. Except for this. This type of attack is very easily dodgeable, which is amazing, and I love it. And it's done. Let's let's move on to the next encounter. I'm gonna, uh, I just want to let you guys know that I'm only going to be covering encounters in this series. Because this is heavily encounter-based. It's not like the no damage videos where I'm just going to, you know, troll and make uh, a story for it and songs and stuff. No, this is just purely out of the combat and stuff and i hope you guys are entertained and i hope you guys learn a lot of stuff in these episodes so yeah let's move on to the next encounter now here we approach these guys and it's I, i'm pretty sure i mess up here in this first uh in this first attempt as you guys can see i i take these guys out good like no problem and then i go down watch how i'm gonna fail this whole uh encounter by blocking again and of course that that means a restart so, next time I go back at them and I do it perfectly, as you guys can see. Yeah, just go with the with the easy approach, even though I got hit here and there. See, it's all very hard, which is dangerous. That's why I was like, let's take this seriously. And, uh, yeah. I just finish these guys with Tartarus Rage and some other attacks, and it's done. See, these wide attacks are very important at the start. Or against these weak enemies, that their attacks, they can, you know, get interrupted and stuff. Next up, we climb this wall and we reach this encounter right here. And uh, of course, I take the optimal approach by grabbing that enemy and doing this with him. And uh, you can see the square square triangles are going to be used a lot and stuff because obviously it's one goaded attack and some Orion's harpoons here and there. And this is going to be the first time I legitimately, the first time I take this chest in my life. I have never taken this chest, but <laughs> here we are. It's telling me about orbs and what they do. Thank you, game. Next up, we approach this encounter, and I know I can skip a lot of these encounters, but I'm, I'm just not a pussy. I really wanted to approach every encounter I can. Maybe I, I might skip some encounters in the future if they're very, like, you know, unfair or whatever. I'm pretty sure there's not a single unfair battle in God of War 3. But if there is some, I'm, uh, and if I can skip it, like, not glitch skipping, just skipping, I would be skipping it. I would, I would consider that. Now we get this first centaur general now this guy's gonna rush at me i'm gonna try to dodge him with a jump but nothing works right there so i instantly go back to this and i i want you guys to know that i cannot use artifacts no cheats no nothing in this challenge even though like uh, an artifact that helps me with qtes is fine i just wanted to not activate it because i wanted to be completely focused on the game engaged on the game i mean obviously when i'm playing as you guys can see see this is all gonna start to get way easier later on like right now it's easy it's gonna get even easier later on just trust me after i kill poseidon a lot of stuff are gonna get a lot easier so yeah yeah as i was saying i did not activate the artifact hephaestus ring just because you know that artifact that allows me to skip these qtes like all the qtes are done by themselves and this centaur is gonna die there he is i just have something against uh I don't know what I was going to say there, and this last enemy is dead, right? And I failed Orion's Harpoon. God, I hate it. I hate it. In God of War 3, a lot of the time, you jinx the Orion's Harpoon for no reason at all. Like, why though? Now, this pussycat tries to attack me, but it's, of course, nothing against my powerful uh, build that I have right here. These guns on Kratos, baby. So this boss, I thought he was going to be problematic for his uh, long range attacks that do massive damage, mind you. But of course, I mean, this first battle, I'm going to be going with him. Like, see, I'm going to be dodging. I know his move patterns and stuff. 
So I'm good at this first attempt, but I'm not at my best. So I'm I'm gonna fail this right here in a bit, and you you guys will see. See square square triangle just to from this range it damages him, which is amazing. And then of course we back up here and attack here and there, which was it was simple up onto this point. I got him down to his QTE and I took out uh, his his uh, claw and stuff, but then I still got fucked on. Now, he's gonna try some new attacks here. Th that fast attack was already there, except it's much faster now for some reason. And it's easily dodgeable, like I'm keeping my distance. This new attack that I dodged in my first attempt, which is just jumping, and I just learned it. Like I was like, okay, so when he does that, I just jump. And uh, this right here does not kill me. You're gonna see how I die in a bit, but I just want to let you guys know that I learned a lot from the first attempt. Like, hey, get away, zone him out and stuff. And I'm gonna change this whole square square triangle tactic in a bit in like the second attempt. See, this was easily dodgeable by just jumping and gliding and stuff. And uh, I wish I, fr I figured this one out faster. Like, why am I square square triangling here? Like, I should be going square on three triangles, but for some reason I wasn't, so... It ki it's kind of rough. Of course, the first... Uh, there I thought I would get hit, but thank god I activated the magic. The first couple of stuff, here, here I die. Watch this unfair death. Like, why did I die here? There's no reason to it. This time by repeating the same exact tactics from the first fight, I go a little further with this type of attack and stuff. You can see that I'm doing uh, the square and three triangles, which does a lot more damage, mind you. And it was better, like I was uh, proceeding faster. Now here we are in the second phase and I want to cover this entirely like I want to show you guys what I'm doing here like this time I learned to jump here even though I'm far away he still might reach me and there it is of course square on three triangles the sweet blades of Athena three triangles I actually like it more than the blades of exile three triangles this is much faster and it's fluid everything just melts into each other see the next move everything is good I love it more than the blades of exile three triangles Although it's very fine, but yeah. So as you can see, I ditched the square square triangle and went with the square and three triangle attacks. Which is much better, obviously, but you do a lot more damage. Hate to break it to you guys, but square square triangle does not do the crazy damage you guys think it does. Yes, it ragdolls the enemies. Yes, it does a lot of stuff, but it does not do as crazy damage as you guys think. And uh, this one is easily dodgeable. Another square and uh, three triangles. I think it's called Valor of Hercules. I don't know. And so I basically cover up the whole fight like this until it's done. So it's easily... Every move he does is easily dodgeable. You get the point. And now the last... Yep. And he's down and I was so happy. So as you guys can see, with my second attempt, I, I managed to best him in this uh, phase of his fight. So it was good, like I was glad that I did it in the second phase. I'm learning way too fast for myself, which is good. Now this encounter right here was simple, of course. I mean, square square triangle them, of course, to open them up. And then square square triangle them to open them up even further. And then the whole uh, square attack to make it easy on myself. I love it. It's actually it, it's actually a very decent challenge, and I love how challenging it is. Like it's on very hard, which is my first challenge ever done on very hard. And so, yeah. Next, we're gonna reach a wall right here. Some wall combat. I mean, nothing that special. I just kill them, I guess. Like grab this guy, throw it at them. Wall combat is amazing in God of War Three. It managed to be way cooler than a lot of games. Just the wall combat. And now we approach Poseidon. Now Poseidon was. <laughs> You're gonna see. Now the boss fight starts and of course I attack the claws the way I do it normally, which is square and three triangles again. And this this first phase and the last phase of course was a, a lot more easier than I thought. Like I expected it to be easy, but not this easy, which is... As you guys can see, I'm wrecking him right now. See, it's gonna be over. And moving on to the next set of claws. And I don't know how that hit, but I guess it hits you in the air as well. Now the real hard part starts, which is going to be the... I'm going to do a Cyclone of Chaos and then grapple to her, her hand, because that's how I like it. 
Now the, the hard part really starts. Now, right here, I had to exper experiment with him and how to attack him and what to do. Like, I, I was c c lost here. Like, I don't know what to do. See, like, this attack has a lot of range, and this attack is fast. Like, I didn't know what to do. See, I was like, this magic and stuff. I'm gonna be covering this first one. And here, even this, I was like, hey, let's just stand here and do nothing until he until his attack is finished. Of course, I was inexperienced in this first uh, uh, attempt against Poseidon. But later on, you're gonna see how much I I completely destroy him, I would say. it's just It just gets easier. So, you see his attacks? I mean, I'm always cowarding out because they're dangerous. You don't have the bow of Apollo to kind of cancel out the uh, restoration animation and stuff after a plume or anything. So, it was dangerous. Like, I was, I was legit scared, but you're going to see later on how I fix this. Like, I'm going to die in a bit. Look at how scary this is. He's going to simply hit me with one of these and boom. I thought it wouldn't damage me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm half destroyed. Look at my health. It, this song very hard, so it is. That's why I'm covering all the combat encounters, because this that that's the main focus of this challenge. And right here, I'm, I'm still doing the same thing. I don't know what to do against this move. And right here, boom, I die. And now I'm gonna instantly move on to the last attempt and how I what I learned and stuff. And yeah, see you guys there. Now this is the the encounter that I win in. I'm always winning and stuff, so you know. I of course magic here because I'm like let's just magic and then I jump and I realize hey I can just jump that and this attack I realized to just climb Gaia's finger and I, I even try other stuff later on just watch so for now that's how I kind of dodge that three stab attack I just climbed this place up and is it here I think uh no I'm still carrying out here I'm still not I'm still not the manly man Kratos is so keep on attacking him from a distance, and here I think I do the, the new thing. I try to attack him while climbing this finger. Now, at first, of course, these attacks don't hit for some reason, but later on, you'll see the big, the amazing discovery that I made while playing this. And is that you can hit him while climbing this finger. Of course, get down and attack and stuff. Until he does that attack again. I just wanted to experiment, like... This time I climb up. See, these attacks don't don't have the range to reach him per se. See here, three hits. I got three hits and, and then I was like, okay, yeah, I can hit him. That that was the confirmation for me and I was like, okay, Poseidon is easy. I can just easily defeat Poseidon now. And uh, I actually hold, held true to this. Like, even this, this is where I wail on him with attacks. Like, look, these first couple of ones don't, don't reach. And then I realized from this range, like, if I, if I slightly climb this finger of Gaia... I can attack Poseidon very fine and damage him safely. And I was right. You guys are going to see in a second. Like, see from this height, I can hit him like five hits. And then it's going to get even more. And then I was like, I really was smart while doing this somehow. Because I kind of busted this encounter. Like, look, you just climb here and literally just attack him. Like there. See? You're doing damage while he's just standing there. Which is amazing. Continue with some plumes climb and this time from a better angle hopefully yeah that's the that's the greatest angle where i'm gonna get like six seven eight hits in which is uh, like what you really need in this and then it's fine it was finally done i was kind of shocked because this was on very hard and i was like maybe there's still an eternity left but it was this it was still good so the experimentation in here was good what i got out of it is that you can climb on Gaia's finger and attack poseidon now, right here, of course, in this phase, it's it's all easy, except he does a lot more uh, attacks and stuff. And I come back to the claw, and it's it's eliminated. And then one claw left, and I, I die right here for no reason at all. Like, I magic, and then he does the thing again, and I, I just don't have time to escape. See, it, it's very fast. I even took out the claw, but I still died. Returning back to it, I, I decided to magic the living shit out of this, because it's over. I mean, after this... Uh, we're gonna be stripped from our magic and stuff, so... In here, we bested Poseidon without blocking, without rolling, without evading and stuff. So, now let's move on to the Underworld. Now, in here, we got the Blades of Exile, aka the best blades. And as you can see, I'm just trying to demonstrate the, uh, the types of attacks that I'm gonna do. Which are gonna be wide attacks and stuff. So, now with the Blades of Exile, we got the Hyperion Ram, which is one hell of a move. And now we're going to climb up and fight some enemies with this. 
Now, as you can see, this encounter, of course, I went with the grab and stuff, but this is where I demonstrate how the Blaze of Exile are gonna make this run possible. I'm gonna be uh, touching on more evading options later on when, when, when these bad boys get upgraded and stuff, but for now, just know that they're still useful. Even at level 1, they're more useful than the Blaze of Athena. These are so, so good. So this encounter was easily busted, like I'm not blocking as much, I'm not rolling, like I kind of learned. See back there, I did not roll. My muscle memory is kind of learning it and stuff, like I was I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just not going to block, I guess. And that's how I just fucked up that enemy back there, and let's move on to the next encounter. Now this is where we get the army of Sparta's magic attack, and here I just wanted to kind of see these white attacks. And then I get grabbed, and then of course destroyed. Here I block like an idiot and I restart because I did say I'm, you, you guys are going to see me block two or three more times like yeah and this is how you want see these white attacks this what this is what you want to do if you really want to do this challenge for yourself you got to try out these white attacks to kind of see I'm turning kind of doing a 90 degree with every attack with the blaze see this I'm um, to cover more ground and stuff that's how you really can get a lot more enemies with one attack like you delay, see, you do one square and then slowly the other square. You don't just instantly move on to the second attack. But yeah, that's how these are done. You can interrupt these enemies' attacks and boom, they're kind of destroyed. I just wanted to demonstrate what I'm going to do for the for the entirety of this run. Or mostly for these normal enemies, so. Yeah, this last enemy's remaining. Let's combo him a bit and <laughs> no room for comboing, I guess. This uh, rope combat, or I guess chain combat, was kind of hard, but then I got to it, I bested it easily. It wasn't that much of a problem, I died only once. Now right here, we approach Morgan. Now I cannot give the Gorgon Serpent a chance, because it freezes Kratos with one, like, one fast quick attack, and it's... I cannot give her the chance is what I'm trying to say, like, if I give her the chance, she's gonna freeze me and I'm gonna die with one hit, so... As you guys are gonna see right here, I'm gonna be passive aggressive or just aggressive i don't know how to explain it see and i it's amazing that the square square triangle cancels her uh animations and it's it's lovely like right here see i'm launching her attacking her i'm just trying to not get frozen so yeah and right here i go for the launch just for more style points and stuff i love it so this encounter was easy i just it, this was just the first time ever finding the serpents. See, I instantly get frozen right here. So I have to be very careful in uh, future encounters. I have to deal with her perfectly. I don't know why I wasn't grabbing her here, but there I think I'm going to grab her now. Why am I not grabbing her? Okay. I have something against these uh, grab animations. Like, even someone commented the other day, why don't you, like, grab the Talosis or, you know, any enemy really, even Minotaurs and stuff. It's just that I hate them because, not hate hate, but I just like, I don't think they're the best thing. I mean, obviously the animation is amazing, the, the mechanic itself, like where you lower an enemy's health and then you grab them and do stuff with them. It's awesome, but I just, I just think it takes me out of the gameplay, that's why I never do it. I try to kill the enemy with my attacks and stuff, see, like, I don't know, it's just a me thing. I love the four options grab for the normal enemies though, like don't get me wrong. I love a lot of grabs, air grabs here and there and stuff. But these last finisher grabs, I don't really like them that much because they take a lot of time and they take me out of the gameplay. Now right here we're gonna free spike and you guys are gonna see me kinda dribble with them and stuff. This is a combat encounter so I thought let's cover it. This is the puzzle where we get the ball of Apollo, so I drop down into a... Hyperion Ram. That air block does not count, by the way. That's just a... I just wanted to uh, do the special attacks and stuff. Like, it's fine. Just know that. And this guy attacks... His attacks are so dangerous. I was like, let's just magic attack. Like, it's not worth dying here. I don't want to die. See, like, he attacks very fast. And I was like, sit your ass down. So I grab him, and of course, I'm going to kill all the enemies on my way. And then burn... Uh, burn... What's his face? He's imprisoned in his prison of tinder. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be easy. We get the bow of Apollo and it's just all simple from here. I'm not gonna be blocking. This whole encounter is gonna be easy. And uh, I just want to let you guys know, I hope you don't get bored of me talking a lot. Because that's literally what I'm gonna have to do throughout this entire series. It has to be this way. 
Because I'm going to have to cover the whole uh, combat encounters and stuff. I can't be like fast forwarding them or anything. Except when they get redundant and I die a lot. Of course, then you get me fast, f like making them play faster and stuff. Maybe two times faster. But just know that I'm going to commentate on the, like the attempt that I win in. So, yeah. Now here we encounter some harpies and I'm going to teach you guys something that I've been hiding for a while. But I don't think there's a point in hiding it anymore. There's something in God of War 2 and 3 called the alternate Orion's Harpoon and you guys are going to see it right now. So instead of the normal Orion's Harpoon to these Harpies, I do this. That is the alternate Orion's Harpoon. In God of War uh, 3, it's very, very useful. As you can see, like, I'm going to do it again and you guys see the, the ground I cover. Like, you instantly just do a 360 with the Harpy and see I blocked there and I'm instantly going to restart. I know I didn't block anything, but I just didn't want to have it there. I'm gonna try out, see, this is the normal Orion's Harpoon, and then the second one is the alternate one. I'm gonna cover this in the Facts About God of War 2 video, hopefully in the part 2 of, the, of that series. And uh, yeah, it's just a very, very important thing, and it made me approach encounters in God of War 2 completely differently. Even in God of War 3 to some extent. Because it's just fun, like, you grab a Harpy, you snatch a Harpy from the air, and then you throw it at other enemies. And it's gonna come in handy in other sections as well, it's not gonna be just here, you're gonna see later on in the destroy everything trial in the on the underworld in a couple of minutes it's gonna come in really handy against the last phase of course i die here see i'm gonna try it out here and uh, look at this it's so useful look so the way of doing this if you're interested which i'm sure you're interested if you love gameplay instead of just pressing circle thanks to hariso zimnas by the way he commented this on god of war 2 and i was just shocked after look I didn't even, uh, like, understand it. I blocked there and I, re I restarted, sorry. I didn't understand it when he wrote it on the God of War 2 Facts video, so... I was stupid. I read it all, of course, but I was like, wait, Alt-O-H? What is O-H? I didn't understand him and his writing and stuff, because he writes stuff and... Like, he's gonna write PR instead of Poseidon's Rage. And I, at the time, I didn't know a lot of that, and so... I was watching one of his videos, I was eating lunch, I think. And I saw him do it, and I was like, bro, what is that? What did you just do there? How did you snatch the enemy and then go into the four options? And he was like, that's the alternate OH. And I was like, wait, alternate OH? And he was like, yeah, you just hold circle instead of just pressing circle to the enemy. So when the enemy is in position for an Orion's Harpoon, you just hold circle. And Kratos snatches him and do, does the alternate har uh, Orion's Harpoon. In God of War 3, you can only do it on the Harpies, though, which is sad, but it's still really good. And you can only, only do it while having the Blaze of Exile equipped and not other, and other weapons, so just keep that in mind. Now, here we have the, th the three trials and stuff. This is going to be easy for the first two trials, but the third trial I'm going to have some trouble with. So this first trial, of course, it's going to be mainly me attacking with wide attacks that cover 80% of the screen. You know, the plumes and stuff. And uh, these hands are going to get taken out easily. I'm not about to catch any hands today, so just keep that in mind. See, I caught that was the only ha hand that I caught back there. Otherwise, I was just starting grabbing them and then plumes, of course. Non-stop plumes. By the way, plumes are these attacks. This attack right here that slams. That's a plume. Just to let y'all know. Because I know you guys, just like me and like 70% of other people, you never really read the moves list. Too good the, <laughs> the vets of the community read it, like Haristos and, you know. Like, I, when I watch, when I read Haristos and, uh... God mode, God's conversations and stuff. I, I, I really get enlightened. Like I'm, like I'm like, bro, these guys know a lot and stuff. And now I'm slowly learning to get into that scene of you know, hard challenges and stuff. And saying PR instead of Poseidon's Rage and saying OH instead of Orion's Harpoon. You know, to shorten the words. Abbreviations, man. I was bad with them. Now I'm good with them. Now starting the second, uh, the second trial right here. It's uh, not that hard. I learned the way to, of course, I've, I've, I've always known this way to kind of stun the Minotaur. And it's to grapple, but I never tried it here. I was just like, let's uh, see this. The Sorry, I tried it. The Hyperion Grapple really stops the Minotaur in his place like this. You instantly stop him in his, uh, in his train move. I don't know that he starts running at you. And I, I decided to stun him on the ground. See, he's stuck to the ground so that I can deal with the other guys. Something I covered in my Facts About God Over 3 video. 
Very, very useful. And you know, playing God of War 3 in this way is really, really fun. Every God of War, actually. This is the thing I love about the all the God of Wars and stuff. It's like, you can play them in all these ways. Like, stylishly or with strategy, not getting hit. And passively, aggressively. I, I just love it, you know. See, I stuck him to the ground so that I can attack the others surrounding him and stuff. Surrounding us. Boom. Stop right there. I'm gonna need that grab. See, right here I'm gonna do these QTEs, uh, nevertheless. Because I need the health orbs, but... Otherwise, while I'm playing normally, I always try to kill the enemies without these things. And now here, of course, one one guy left. <laughs> of course, I'm going to combo the life out of him. Orion's Harpoon. It's like, in God of War 2, you could alternate Orion Harpoon and normal enemy as well. I'm going to cover that in the facts about God of War 2 video. Just wait. Hariso Zimnas really made me play these games, like, a lot better. Like, God of War 3, I used to play it crazily. Now, now I'm playing it with some new tr stress as well. Look at the alternate OHC. Boom. It's very useful. Look at this. I'm destroying the serpent. Boom. Whole circle. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. It's very useful. Look. Look. You just snipe her. And here I'm going to mess up. I don't think I'm going to die. I'm just going to block on accident, I think. Like, so far this is going good. I, I was like, uh, freeze me. No problem. Like, less magic here and there, of course. Because I knew the... Serpent gives back magic orbs. I was like, let's put this Minotaur on standby. This Serpent grabs me. And I'm now I'm going to grab her. Come here, bitch. And yeah, so right here, it's mandatory that I grab these enemies and stuff. I need orbs. I need this Serpent to freeze the enemies surrounding me. I need a lot of stuff, but yeah. In here, I think I was hesitant to kill this Minotaur. Yeah, I wanted health orbs. And now, when Harpies spawn, my playstyle completely changes, and I focus on them completely. Like, I go for the Alt-OH, like, look. Because it's, it's very important. Look what I do. That stage hazard, that collision right there. I think it does not affect the very hard difficulty. Like, it does not matter if you're on very hard. This still does the normal damage it usually does to enemies. Which is amazing. Think I, I think I'm going to lose miserably now by... by oh, by dying. Damn. So as you can see, I'm just uh, normally going to see, I'm, I'm using, I'm utilizing these harpies. Very useful, remember. Uh, this made the thing a lot easier than I thought, and I don't know how I died there, and then I grabbed this and threw it at her. Yeah, this was easy. Then of course I reached the Minotaur and I blocked like an idiot, so <laughs> I restarted again. This time I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover the entire run, and you guys are gonna see for yourselves that I cleared it. So, these Harpies, again, utilizing them and using alternate OH on them. Alternate Orion's Harpoon, alternate Air Snatch, boom. So, this Serpent is going to get taken out easily. The first one I was talking a lot, this time I'm going to I'm gonna be talking about how I beat this, which is... Yeah, you're going you're gonna to see for yourself. Like I, I, I'm, I'm like, let's absorb these hits because there's nothing to do at that point. I'm late. Launch this girl. Hyperion Ram. Get rammed by this Minotaur and grab her. After freezing this Minotaur, I try to take him out with uh, plumes and stuff, but it doesn't work, so I go with the magic. And then these Harpies were getting uh, annoying, so boom. Last Harpy, can I utilize it? Do I do anything? No, I just I, I just ram myself to it. Come here. And yeah, this last Minotaur is left, and this time I don't mess up. I don't block accidentally, which I did a lot in this uh, trial of Archimedes, trial of whoever, I forgot the name. And this last Minotaur is down, and the whole thing is bested by Zesty Man. Call me Zesty Man. Now we're gonna have two Minotaurs, uh, and they're gonna get absolutely wrecked with this. Like, I don't know how this happened, but look, look at this. Boom. Both of the pots uh, got exploded, and that arrow is so well shot to the red orbs chest, but I never got it. I can never get that red orbs chest. I always try that shot, but it never works, but whatever. So yeah, they got bested. Now we're going to get some Olympus Fiends that are going to get taken out easily. Like, these pots really made a lot of stuff easier, so they're all destroyed. One guy left, dead. Next, we got these two enemies, and they're going to grab me, of course. Uh, look at this these two enemies owning me like come on boom and there's another example of the Orion's harpoon being broken and not good broken no it's mechanically broken like sometimes you go for the Orion's harpoon it does not work for stupid reasons and I hate this in God of War 3 but it's whatever 
we glide up we get two olympus fiends right here that we're gonna take out professionally of course boom bam and i love these enemies because you can redirect their orion's harpoon like this which is amazing like for example i'm gonna eliminate this guy like that see look at this boom it's just amazing man god of war's uh combat system is one hell of a combat system i wish this was uh left out for even for like all the enemies like in god of War one you can redirect all orion's harpoons in here no you can only do it to the olympus fiends and olympus archers which sucks it does it does suck a lot but this is what we got it's fine it's not fine but let's go with it boom these two are down boom this guy is down a very risky move doing that orion's harpoon because i would have lost a lot of health if i got hit but it's whatever after gliding and the realization hitting me that i can upgrade my blades right now i press start to upgrade my blades and i got some questionable <laughs> upgrades i think the game was teasing me like hey go ahead and parry too bad i cannot parry sorry golden fleece i i can't use you uh, but 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 i guess the cyclone of chaos is somewhat useful for some crowded situations somewhat but yeah whatever now we approach this encounter that i don't know a lot about because of course i'm a rookie here so <laughs> please excuse me for this now i tried to kind of damage these guys a lot but then i forgot that it's very hard and they do the big damage and i'm here to do the shitty damage so plumes did literally nothing but the ultimate plume of course it still does the job but these guys are dangerous they run towards you their attacks do a lot of damage they're tanky they don't they don't get interrupted see like boom and here's the thing that sucks here i cannot roll so when they when they get me in a like in a streak in a combo they can hit me non-stop and i cannot get up and roll like like usual so one time i get hit and then i'm just pounded by them non-stop so i was a rookie here and i'm gonna die let's skip instantly to the encounter that i got right there i just died this time is the real uh encounter this is the i think the third try and i tried damaging this guy in instead of the other guy so let's jump and uh, run away first of course and again another plume and uh i think this plume gets some see even that plume didn't get him these guys are very dangerous they do a lot of damage and this this is kind of hard see i decided to do magic here i think i'm gonna waste all my magic here so yeah and then i got fooled there thinking this is god of war 2 where you have eye frames with the bow this is actually one of the many reasons i didn't do god of war 2 i, I was decided I, I was like let's go with god of war 3 because it's gonna be harder there is no a lot there's not a lot of eye frames here I was very low on health and I decided to run back to get these dead guys, the undead zombies or some sort, to get some health back. And I, I, I do run for it, like, after this. But then I realize I'm not getting a lot of health. See, like, I'm gonna retreat, retreat in a second to this place. And here I realize something new, like, notice how they're gonna stop. Look, that one Talos is gonna return. I get very few health from this guy. And I was like, bro, screw it, let's kill this guy. See how, re how he returned? And right then, the realization hit me. I was like, oh, wait. I vividly remember the video. And of course, I grab him. This guy's dead. I vividly remember watching a Haristo's video where he was playing God of War 3. He was at this section. And I was like, wait, why is he going back to the ladder? And then I looked at his video and I was like, yo, wh why are these guys not attacking and stuff? And this was way back, like I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. And right here, I accidentally found out about this. Uh, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Now I know why. Like, I think in the video of Haristos, I did kind of comment with myself on my mind. I was like, okay, that's a nice exploit. Like, these guys cannot uh, follow you at, to these stairs and stuff. Of course, I always get amazed by what uh, Haristos does. And I learn a lot. And this is a very good example. Like, I learned it by... I, this wasn't the approach. This wasn't the intent. I wasn't, like, approaching these guys with, Hey, let's go to the ladder. They cannot... To the stairs. Sorry, I kept on saying ladder. Let's go to the stairs. They're not gonna follow me. I did not go with that uh, in mind. I still I still fought them normally. But then when I went back there, I remembered, Wait, there was that one video where Haristos does this and that. And I was like, yeah, let's keep on doing this. From here, yeeting this guy to Tartarus and then grabbing this guy... The rest is history, and it's well, it was easy. Like, I, I made sure to not get hit again, although I think I do get hit. Nah, I sent this guy to, uh, to Tartarus as well. So, yeah, thank you, Haristos. Thank, uh, that guy taught, uh, taught me a lot about this game, man, honestly. This game and God of War 2. Also, God of War 1. 
Now here we approach these Snoop Dogs and I grab this guy but then I made a fatal mistake by, <laughs> by just rolling backwards like an idiot. Of course muscle memory kicks in every now and then. This time I decided to take my range and to do this from afar kinda. And I kinda take him out perfectly right here I think. I think this is the attempt where I get them all like I grab this guy. Then grab another guy. Yeah. This time I was good like I did not make any mistakes by rolling or anything. And there's also an alternate way to throw these dogs at each other, and it's this one, where you Orion's Harpoon one of them off the air. It's not very useful, as it doesn't do a, cra a lot of crazy uh, stuff when it comes to the range department, but if they're close enough, you kind of destroy them with the collision that happens. Yo, how I dodged that guy! Did you guys see that? And it's done. Hold on, let's rewind that. Look at this, look at... Look at that! Oh, God! The hitbox, bro. The hitbox is like... Taken 7 level of hitbox. Now, here we get the Blade of Olympus basket, and we unlock the Rage of Sparta. This is somewhat good to save me from vital points and stuff. And this actually kind of gets through my mind right now. How hard is Hades gonna be? Oh, my God. Not, not sexually hard, of course. I'm just talking. Hades is gonna be very hard to defeat, honestly. Like, this is the Blade of Olympus, but it's not gonna do me very well. It's gonna be good for canceling stuff out, like canceling animations to not get destroyed by Hades. Or even other enemies, but yeah. Right now that I'm not that upgraded, like, you guys might be thinking, hey, why isn't this guy worried about, uh, the Hades Cerberus Breeder and the Satyrs and stuff? It's because it's not gonna be that hard. Of course, it's gonna be hard, of course, but not that crazy hard as you guys might think. I'm sure I'm gonna manage with some uh, stuff that you're gonna know in the later episodes. I can't talk about them right now. I just wanna kind of cover them in the next episode. I want everything covered in this episode and not in a previous episode. So, yeah. Grapple. 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 Boom. These guys are here. I'm gonna take them out with the arrow. Nothing that special. I wanted to snipe these two together, but nothing worked. I went with the normal approach of just sniping them like this. Now we approach these two Cerberus breeders of Hades that they're gu they they guard this door. These guys are not hard, not as hard as the last Cerberus that we fight the Hades Cerberus breeder. So these guys aren't anything that special, but I still got destroyed by them every now and then. Like I was trying my best at the start, as you guys can see right here. Like I'm trying plumes, I'm trying ultimate plumes like this and stuff. But nothing really was working like see these attacks i can jump for a, for, a, for a lot of these attacks but i still haven't found my footing and my ground right here like later on i'm gonna found that i'm gonna find a better way to deal with these two guys so let's instantly move on to the last attempt where i got these guys where i bested these guys Okay, so right here, this is the attempt that I got them. So, what I learned from all the other previous attempts is that I can just destroy this guy with the ultimate plume at first. And I can abuse some of these taunts. I'm still, I still don't know how to abuse his taunts. Like, see when he just roars like this? I can attack him every now and then, which is good. And now this is the thing that I learned. Just using this triangle attack with the Blades of Exile. It does some nice damage and I can instantly jump out of it whenever I want. So, see? And then this is what I do. I start fighting one of these Cerberus guys while the other is just behind him taunting. Now, this guy also shields me from the other guy behind him, which is good. Like, see that the that other Cerberus behind him? He's not coming towards me. I'm just here busy with this guy. Although sometimes that that does tend to break and I and he does rush towards me, but I still manage to get to get him to kind of be in that position. See like He's kind of in the position to attack now, and I just get behind this guy, and then it's all good. Like, I just keep on attacking. Dodge by jumping and jumping again and stuff, until I get all three heads of the first Cerberus. Now, I used to have trouble with this after, like, I, I did kill this first Cerberus, like, two times before this, but I still had trouble against the other Cerberus, because I was kind of greedy, let's not lie. I, I still was trying to kind of kill the, the second Cerberus as fast as I can for some reason. See, that attack is dangerous. It does hit sometimes. So just keep on triangle. Jump. Move away from the projectile. This guy hits you. Come back. He hits his teammate. He hits me. This guy hits me. And that was uh, practically the last time I ever get hit. I'm pretty sure. So here I get this, the third uh, head of this Cerberus. 
And now it's a one-on-one -on -one with this Cerberus. Now, it's great that these two guys are not as strong as the last Cerberus breeder. Because that last guy is just one OP son of a bitch. He's a boss fight. Trust me. So, yeah. And in here, I realized, like, it's all good. If I can just keep on being consistent with this, just attacking and jumping. Jumping, attacking, jumping, attacking. And I kept this up to some time until I got him. Of course, dodging here and there, because sometimes he gets that aggressive. See, he keeps on attacking for some reason, and then he's back to his loop. We're back to this loop where he just attacks, I press triangle, I, I press triangle, and then jump when he, whenever he does the attack to kind of not get hit. See, but sometimes he gets, in, he gets into some aggressive state where he keeps on attacking, but this is all simple for now. Like, like, see, I can instantly jump out of this triangle attack, which is really good. Like, it does not need me to cancel the animation with the bow of Apollo, which is amazing. And that's the second hit. That attack is very dangerous, the, the one he just did. Like, sometimes I, I swear to God, I jumped at the right time. I was way too high, and he still kind of catches me and kind of fucks me up with his palm. And I, I really hate this attack right here. I really hate it. It's very dangerous. Especially later on when, when we face the big the big doll, the Hades Service Breeder at the end, the boss fight Service Breeder. That guy does this and just, he throws fire behind you. It's just very hard. I love that boss so much. But I'm not sure if I'm going to love him in this challenge, though. <laughs> I'm just saying. So keep on playing it safe. Just dodge this. And then we got him. That was the last hit of this Cerberus. And we move on to the next and last encounter of this video. Now right here, I go for the grab to grab the dog and stuff. And again. And again. Of course, I'm trying to play this uh, smart. Boom. Boom. Just with plumes and attacks that cover some big area damage and stuff. Get this shit off me. Uh, Pass Zesty is stupid sometimes, yes. Like, I don't know why I wasn't grabbing these sentry guys right here. They would have made the job a lot easier. There, I finally grab him, and yeah. See, it got a lot more easier. I don't know. Pass Zesty is stupid sometimes, as I just said. Boom. Grabbing this guy. Finishing him by accident. I didn't mean to finish him back there. And yeah, the rest is just simple grabbing and doing this, taking them to a trip and stuff. It's all easy play, like, easy clap, boys. They're getting wrecked. They're getting wrecked! This last guy gets brutally fucked by Kratos. And here we reach the end of today's part of the God of War, 1 ch God of War 3 challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot of stuff here because this is really the optimal way of doing it. Of course, if I do it again, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get much better at this. But for now, this is the first time I ever try a really hard challenge. Yes, this is harder than no, than no damage uh, challenges and stuff. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a, a lot of stuff from it here and there. I hope you guys make your own challenges to have fun in this game and these timeless games, all the God of Wars. Okay, so see you guys in the next episode of God of War 3 without blocking, without rolling. I decided to make it in, in this format just because uh, I really wasn't feeling like making a big project out of this since it's going to take a lot of big space from my laptop and I didn't have a lot of space. So I, I just, I, w I went with this style of video. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys like my commentary on the video. It's been your Team Gamer Zesty. Peace.